Okay, in this video, we're gonna be talking about the Business Model Canvas, which is a popular tool that is used to map out and communicate a business model. It's used by uh, lots of companies and different institutions, and it's fairly easy to get. Uh, and what I like about the Business Model Canvas is one, it forces you to think about the very important aspects of a business model, uh, which we talked about in the last video. So if you haven't watched that, I would recommend going back and taking a look at that. Um, but it also is creates kind of a common and shared language. And so it's once it's mapped out, it's very easy to communicate with employees or staff or anyone else. Uh, and so I like it for those reasons. So we're going to be going through the business model canvas and I'm going to show you how to use this. Uh, what I would recommend just for further reading is a book called Business Model Generation. Uh, you can find it online on Amazon and I don't believe it's terribly expensive, uh, but it goes into the business model canvas in much more detail than I'm gonna go into right now. I'm gonna give you pretty much a broad strokes overview of the business model canvas so you understand the different components of it and kind of what goes in each of the boxes, but that'll give you a lot more clarity and then give you some examples of different business models and how the different components or building blocks as they're termed kind of um, sort of interact with one another. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start and there's a specific way that you actually complete the canvas. And so I'm gonna number them as we go, uh, just so you kind of have that on your end and know which ones to tackle because uh, there's some important things that we have to address first before we can get into some of the other elements of the model. Okay, so the first thing that we have to address in a business model, which shouldn't be a huge surprise, uh, is we have to address what we call customer segments. So our customer segment, if you're familiar with the concept of a target market or target consumer, uh, essentially represents the consumer that we're trying to pursue. Now, what I typically recommend here, and notice there's not a lot of really space on the canvas, and so you're not gonna go into and itemize like the exhaustive demographic d data of who you think your customer is. Um, you're gonna describe them in maybe a couple of words. You're not gonna write in complete sentences. You're certainly not gonna write a paragraph. Just a few words that help indicate who the customer is that you're speaking or that you're trying to pursue. Um, so if your target market is single parents or uh, moms with one kid who work from home or you know whatever it might be, right? That's who you're gonna describe. And obviously you have additional data to support who your customer is and you have like a customer profile or you complete a customer empathy map or you do customer discovery. And so you've got all of the information on your customer. But remember, the canvas is just trying to describe it sort of in broad strokes so that you can interact with other people uh, using this document. So we first wanna describe who our customer is in some degree of detail, but again, giving the constraints here with regards to space, you're not gonna go into a terrible amount of detail. Now, the reason we start with our customer is because everything else on the canvas is influenced by the customer, right? So our entire model uh, from the offer, from uh, the channels that we use and everything is influenced by our customer, so we have to get that right first. Once we do that, then we can go into the next block, which is number Two, and that's here. And this is what we call our value proposition. Now value proposition, very simply, uh, the way I like to communicate it is it really just describes uh, what's different about you, uh, why should people care, right? And so typically uh, it addresses the problem and obviously solution. Uh, one of the ways that I like to encourage students to address this, because this can be a little bit abstract, uh, is to use a very simple template when communicating your value proposition. Uh, and that is, we provide, fill in the blank on what provide is, right? That would be your offer to fill in the blank, that's your customer, so that they can blank. That's your value proposition, right? That last piece there that is the value proposition. So this is really what you're allowing your customer to do and why their life will be different with your product or service available. Uh, and so this is a very key piece to this. We have to be able to communicate with some level of specificity why we are different and why we are worth buying. Uh, because in any market, regardless of how good it is, consumers have choices and there's always competition and I get it all the time where people say, well, my product is different. 
Uh, and the reality is, is there is always something somewhat similar, might not be identical to what we are doing, but there is always some sort of substitute that exists. And so we need to be able to communicate what we were actually doing and why it's worth the time of our customers. Now, from there, we move on to the third block. And our third block here is what we call our channel. The way that you want to look at your channel is your channel is really what connects your value proposition here to your customer. Okay, so this is how we're actually going to get our product or service to consumers. So when you're thinking about channels, we often think about the physical channel, right? So we talk about supply chains and getting products through the supply chain to where we can get it to the consumer. And that's certainly one piece of it. But we, we also want to think about how we're going to communicate with our customer. What channels are we going to use? How are we going to reach them? Whether that's through social media or through a different channel, but then the physical channel, are we online? Are we gonna do third party brick and mortar? What does that look like? And so really we're talking about how do we get our offer to consumers? How do we communicate with them? What are the things that we're gonna use? Again, this all goes back to if we understand who our customer is, right? Because if we understand who they are, we have a complete profile of them, then we know how they get information. We know what kind of social media platforms they use. Uh, we know whether they prefer online shopping or whether they prefer shopping in a store. We know how they shop, whether it's on a mobile device or on a desktop computer. We know what operating system they use. I mean, we know everything. And so with that information, it puts us in a unique position to design a solution uniquely tailored for our customer. So moving on to the fourth area. The fourth area up here is what we call customer relationships. And this is often a very difficult area to map out in the business model, at least initially. And so what I always encourage students to do is, I mean, a lot of this, we don't deal in absolutes, right? Especially in entrepreneurship, but generally speaking in life, right? So what I encourage people to do is acknowledge the assumptions you're making when you're filling out the canvas. There are always going to be assumptions, right? I assume this is my customer. That might not be. I assume that my solution, my offer, solves a problem. It might not. But once you identify the assumptions, it puts you in a really good position because now you can actually design and conduct experiments to try to test those assumptions, much like a scientist would in creating a hypothesis in a lab and running an experiment and seeing if that proves or disproves the hypothesis and that sorts of thing. Um, obviously, getting into a lot of the very kind of minutia of entrepreneurship, but something to keep in mind. So going back to this value prop or this uh, customer relationship piece here with customer relationships, really we're trying to describe what type of relationship our customer expects. Uh, and this is in many ways dependent upon the model uh, itself. And so an example is you might have personalized service in some businesses, particularly that they're very high end. Um, the customer is going to expect a certain level of service where they're going to be assigned a person that's going to help them through that process. By comparison with a online business, it might be very much self-service, right? Where there's a couple of help forums, an FAQ page, and the customer largely is kind of figuring them things out on their own. It's going to depend on price point because as the price increases, obviously that relationship, what customers expect is a little bit more as well. Um, and so those are things that always have to be considered. Now, one thing is if you're competing on price, your customer relationship probably isn't going to be like this huge expansive thing because again, if you're trying to keep costs down, that could be a, a very significant kind of cost area uh, that might affect your ability to operate the model and to actually make money. So uh, we've got these areas so far. So we've talked about customer segments, uh, value propositions, channels, and customer relationships. Uh, now we're going to move on down to the bottom here. And our next area, which is block five, is our revenue model. 
Now here we're going to answer the question, how do we actually make money? Now there are lots of different revenue models. We're not going to cover them in this video. I believe I covered them in a prior lecture, but here we're going to talk about our revenue model. So whether that's asset sales, subscription, licensing, whatever it might be, this is where we identify how we are actually going to make money. Now once we finish here, we're going to move on and we're going to go on to the sixth block and that is going to be our key resources. These are the things that we absolutely need to make our model work. And so we've already described how we're going to make money. We described what problem we're going to solve and who we're going to go after. Now we're looking at execution, right? To create all of the value that we want and to capture the value that we want, what are the things that we're going to have to do? Now, this is not where we can do this exhaustive list of all of the resources we need because usually people say well i need financing well yeah which business doesn't need financing right that's that's obvious but what are the things that are unique to your business model right so if you're going into manufacturing right key resources for you are going to be equipment and machinery right that is pivotal if you don't have that your entire model doesn't work and that's really the way you want to look at these things uh, is if you don't have one or two of these things, it really affects your ability to operate your business. And don't put money because you don't need money. You need the things that money allows you to obtain, right? So money is just the means to the end. What is it that you're going to use for the money? Those typically are the key resources. All right, moving up to the next block, we have the seventh building block, and that is going to be our key activities. Now, one thing I want you to consider is that our key resources down here drive our activities. So the things that are important to us drive the behaviors that we need to engage in. Okay, and these become really important. So if a key resource for you is your, your, your sales staff, let's say, right? That's a, it's a pivotal resource and so it's human labor. A key activity, of course, is acquiring customers, right? Is bringing sales in the door. If you are a subscription-based business, right, your, your key resource might be your, your website or your platform. And your key activity is making sure that stinking thing is always working, right? Because if it doesn't work and you don't have that thing working, then it's going to be very problematic for you. You're going to have a higher churn rate. Not many transactions are going to go through. That's a very big issue. So always think about the resources that you need are going to drive the activities that you need to engage in. Uh, moving on to the key partner stage, which is building block eight. We have key partners. And the key partners are the uh, different businesses that we need to have a positive relationship with uh, in order to help us accomplish something with our business model. And so if you were to look at uh, a subscription-based business, maybe like, uh, like take Spotify, for example, so the music streaming service, uh, key partners for them uh, are the music producers, our artists, right? The people that they work with that they have to have really good relationships with to be able to have access to music and those sorts of things. And so that becomes really, really important. Uh, if you were a retailer, right, You're, I mean, you might have a key partner um, that provides you with the bulk of your inventory, right? And that's a very important relationship. You need to cultivate that relationship and make sure that it's solid. Uh, if you're engaging in a franchising type business, right? Maybe a key partner for you is a really good commercial realtor who's going to help you locate properties uh, and find you a good deal on things and those sorts of things. Um, so your key partners are really what help you accomplish your key activities or obtain your key resources and ultimately allow you to deliver your value proposition to consumers. Now the last building block way at the bottom here is building block number nine and this is our cost structure. Now your cost structure is where you identify your most significant cost. Now again uh, a lot of students and a lot of people will take this and think, okay, I'm going to itemize everything. So I've got to, I've got to buy some computers. That's important. And I need probably some office supplies like paper and, you know, printer, ink cartridges, those sorts of things. That's not what we're doing here. What we're focusing on are the most significant costs for our business. So if I'm a retailer, for example, where I'm buying something and then selling it to somebody else, 
my cost structure is predominantly going to be inventory and wages. Those are my significant costs, right? Those are the things that I have to incur in order to actually make money. Uh, if I am operating a service-based business, let's say a hair salon, then your cost structure is going to be people, right? It's going to be predominantly labor because you're a service-based business. You're not buying physical goods primarily, although you can carry merchandise and those sorts of things to sell, but your primary revenue generator is actually the service. And so your primary cost is going to be tied to that service, which is going to be paying for hairstylists and those sorts of people to be able to offer the service there too. So thinking about those cost structures, and remember, I mentioned this in the lecture on what is a business model. It's important that with building blocks five and nine, that we have a we we have some degree of financial viability. So we've we've made some determination that if we're able to offer our value proposition, right, offer our product or service to customers, that this is all going to pencil out financially, right? If we go through the trouble, it it has to make sense financially. Otherwise, why go through? The entire process it's very long and lengthy and if it's not going to lead to the results that you want then why go down that path to begin with um, so when you're taking a step back and looking at the model here I want to point out a couple of things now that you kind of see some of the building blocks when you think about what is a business model right there's four key areas right there's the offer there's the customer there's the financial viability and there's the infrastructure when you look at this it really, you can see those four areas mapped out with a little bit more specificity to it, right? So you got in this area, you've got your customer right here. So this is that first area. When you're talking about your value proposition or your offer, let's say, uh, you're focusing on this area right here. So building blocks two, three, and four. And when you're looking at financial viability, it's down here. It's our cost structure and our revenue models. And when you're looking at infrastructure, it's building blocks six, seven, and nine. Your key resources, your key activities, and your key partners, right? So the business model canvas is great because it takes those four areas, it splits them up into areas where it forces you to look at some really important things, and then it gives you a little bit of clarity on what you're trying to accomplish so you know what are the key drivers for your business, what are the things that you really have to focus on, uh, because there's a lot of things that you really that are going to require your attention when you're trying to start a business and when you're running a business. And so it's really important to be able to prioritize what are the most important things for you, what are the things going to drive value. So looking at the canvas, you can see how they're split up in those four areas. Right. The other thing I want to want to mention is if you were to cut this canvas in theory in half right down the middle, you would you would draw one conclusion. And that's over here is all about uh, kind of your uh, your customer. Right. So this is all this is all the, the right hand side of the canvas looking at your segment, your relationships, your channels, your your revenue models, your value proposition, those sorts of things. Uh, really, this is this is all about value creation, right? So this is how you are going to try to capture value for yourself. When you look at this side of the uh, the business model canvas, here we're really focusing on execution, right? This is how do we? What are the things we have to do to be able to attain the right hand side of the business model canvas? So just another kind of general observation, I think that's really useful. Um, so kind of to recap, as we finish up the video. First things, really important, you got to follow the order. Uh, I know it seems a little silly maybe, um, but really to do a thorough job on filling out the business model canvas and to have something that you can move forward with and start testing assumptions and those sorts of things, you really want to be able to start with your customer and everything should flow out from there because the customer is the most important piece here. The second thing, because the customer is the most important piece, got to spend a lot of time on the customer discovery, uh, interviewing customers, doing questionnaires, asking probing questions, really kind of digging in a little bit in the, into the details because the more information you have on your customer, the easier it's going to be to fill out the other areas of the canvas. If you've got just a real surfacey 
kind of understanding of who your customer is. Or my favorite is when people say, oh, my customer is like anyone. It's totally I'm like, great. Well, how do you reach anyone? Uh, what channels would you use? I'm like, well, I don't know. Exactly. Right. Or my customers 18 to 50. I'm like, well, that's a broad range. Like who, I mean, what does that even look like? Um, so you really want to have a narrow set of characteristics because, one, it makes it easier for you to create something that's valuable, but it also makes it easier for you then to understand, okay, well, I know exactly who I want to reach, so let's look at which platforms those people use. Let's look at ways to communicate with them, and so everything else becomes a little bit more clear once you've got a better understanding of your customer. So I uh, hope that's helpful. Again, I recommend checking out the book, Business Model Generation. You can download the PDF for the Business Model Canvas online so you can start kind of messing with it. Uh, but it's a very great tool for you to be able to kind of map out your business model.